Good morning, welcome to another gear view. I can't really call it a gear review, but I've been asked by a couple of people just to give my opinion on footwear and walking in the UK, which I've done a fair bit of now. Uh, if you're a seasoned walker, you're not going to get much from this, I'm afraid. Uh, if you've already spent your money, got your blisters, worked out your footwear, and if you're looking for me to say this is what you ought to be buying, that ain't going to happen. And that'll become obvious as we go through. What I want to do is just briefly explain the different types of footwear, different types of waterproofing, and where you should buy your shoes from. Um, the three main types of footwear are boots, shoes, and what's called trail runners. They all have their own advantages, all have their own place, and they all have disadvantages. Boots give you massive ankle support, um, massive confidence when walking in them. Shoes have good undersole, heavy protection, trail runners are light and flexible. Depending on the environment that you're walking in depends which one you would choose and also what physical condition you are in. When I first started walking I, my ankles were relatively weak and I did start off with boots. Uh, I then transitioned to shoes because I realised I didn't need the ankle support but I did have, still have a lot of problems with blisters and my feet were quite tender. Until my feet hardened up I wouldn't have been able to go to trail runners. As it is now I only wear trail runners for long distance walking but I'm still not walking in hills or rocky environment. Uh, most of the stuff I'm doing is Waymark trails, national trails, um, countryside, that type of stuff. Uh, the problem with boots is that they are generally heavier. Trail runners are generally the lightest, but there will be people who say, oh, you can get light boots or heavier, whatever. But in general, boots are heavier, trail runners are the lightest, and shoes are the middle ground. That's the way it works. As for waterproofing, there are three types of waterproofing, really. There's waterproofing by virtue of the material, which these boots are because they've got a heavy leather on them, which if you take care of the leather, it will last forever. Yeah? But in a lot of water, if you're walking in water for a long time, it will soak through. Yeah? And they will take a long time to dry. These are Gore-Tex lined which are brilliant keep out the water don't have the heavy properties of the leather and lastly you come to trail runners like these which have no waterproofing um, which has advantages and disadvantages again um, it's weird when you first get a non-waterproof shoe um, because with these i generally avoid water if i can because if water goes in the top, these will stay wet. Yeah, no, Gore-Tex does not allow the water to come back out again. Yeah, so if water goes in the top, my feet are wet. With these, they are designed to pump the water out. So I can walk through a stream and my feet will be dry again in 20 minutes. If I get water in the top of these, I'm not going to get my feet dry for quite a while, if at all. Um, boots, if they've uh, got a Gore-Tex lining, you obviously have a lot more depth that you can go into before the water goes in the top. Yeah. It is quite freaky when you first get waterproof, non-waterproof shoes and you're able to walk through water. Um, very strange. When I did the Itching Way last year, it flooded and I was wearing these and I ended up having to wear flip-flops because I knew that if I walked in the water in these, I was just going to have wet feet all day. As it was, I changed into flip-flops, walked through the water, and it was, 
it was okay. If I'd have been wearing these, I'd have just carried on walking. I actually find that I'm quicker in these because I don't have to avoid the water. But it does take a little bit of getting used to. When it comes to buying the boot, buying the footwear, I would always recommend speaking to a specialist or at least somebody who's in the know. Uh, I had very specific needs when I bought these boots. Um, and I went to Cotswolds and I found them really helpful. Uh, the bloke who served me, well, he, he appeared about 12 to me, but he was incredibly knowledgeable and these boots have done me well. Uh, these boots will last me out now. I, had, I realistically only wear these for one, two months of the year during the worst of the winter and only for short walks. These are my go-to for up to five miles. Um, I bought these on the advice of a friend of mine who does a lot of walking. I did some very long walks in these and they were fine. I just wanted something lighter, which is why I went on to the, the trail runners in the end. But I use these for walks up to sort of five miles when I'm walking the dogs in the morning. Um, these last me about 18 months, but they do get some heavy wear. Um, these ones, I went to a specialist shop just outside Guildford. Um, I'll put a link down below because I honestly can't remember their name. Um, and they've lasted me about a year. So trail runners do wear out quicker than the other two, is my experience. But they're worth it. In the time that I've been wearing trail runners, I've not had blisters. That's partly because my feet were hardened in wearing these shoes using compressed plasters, uh, KT tape, which is a whole other issue. Um, but now I just wear these with one pair of socks. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I didn't promise anything earth shattering, but if you are starting out, hopefully this can help you to make some informed decisions. Whichever you choose, make sure that you try them on. Make sure that you get some advice because you don't want to be walking or spending money and discovering that you've got the wrong shoes. Keep safe, keep well, until next time.